For module two, lesson four, we're going to be talking about converting or changing numerical expressions into unit form as a mental strategy for multiplication. What this means is that we're going to take a look at some number sentences and figure out how can we mentally break down and decompose those numbers to make multiplication easier for us. The equation or the numerical expression we'll be using today is 24 times 11 equals blank. Step one with our equation is we want to identify the designated, designated unit, which is the unit that we will keep the same or constant, and then we want to identify the other factor unit, which is the factor that we will decompose. Usually when you're trying to decide which, design, which number to designate as the designated unit, you want to ask yourself which number is easier to work with. And it really doesn't matter which one you choose, you just need to make sure that whichever one you choose, you can work with it and you keep it the same. For me, I'm going to choose 24 as my designated unit. The reason that I chose that is it's easy for me to decompose 11 and break down into 10s, um, and that's the reason that I chose that. But you could also choose 11. Just make sure that you stay with the number that you chose. Step two is you want to write the designated unit in word form and the other factor as a number. So my designated unit is 24, so I'm going to write 24. And my other number, 11, will remain in number form. So what I have is 11 24s with an S because I have multiple 24s. The next step, step three, is to decompose the other factor unit into easy to solve numbers. What that means is numbers that are easy to work with for you. There's many different ways that you can do this and many different numbers you can choose. It's all up to what is easiest for you in your learning. The number that I'm going to break up is the number 11. And for me, the easy to use or easy to solve numbers for 11 would be 10 and 1. Now, 10 and 1, when you add them together, equals 11. So I want to make sure that I know that I'm adding these numbers. If your easy to use numbers are subtraction, for example, if you had 15 minus 4 equals 11, and those were your easy to use numbers, remember what operation you're working with because that will come in handy when you're writing your equation. Now, step four is write out the new word form. Remember, when you're writing out the new word form, you want to use the appropriate operation for your easy to solve numbers. For me, I chose 10 plus one to equal 11, so I wanna make sure that I'm using that addition sign to write out my new word form. So instead of 11 24s, I now have 10 24s plus 1 24. Remember, I'm not adding that S here at the end because it is only 1. Here I add the S because I have multiple 24s. I have 10. Now we want to write it out as a number sentence or a numerical expression, which is the fancy academic way to say a number sentence. You want to remember that you have to use your parentheses so that you know what operations or which part of the equation to do first. Here we have two sections. We have 10 24s and we have 1 24. Each of those 
we need to do first. So we're going to put those in parentheses. And we're adding each of those numbers. So I'm going to add that addition sign right here. When you have 10 24s, this is showing multiplication. So I have 10 times 24. And I have 1 24s, which is 1 times 24. And if you've noticed, the designated number or the designated unit that I chose, 24, has remained the same in each of the steps that I've done. The other factor, the other unit, I have broken up and I have changed. Now, step six is we solve and make sure to use PEMDAS in order of operations. So I'll start with my parentheses and I'll start from the left to the right. So 10 times 24 is easy for us because we've done a lot of learning with multiples of 10. So when I'm multiplying by 10, I just move that decimal over. And I move it over to the right because I'm making my number bigger because I'm multiplying. So I have 240. I know it's 240 because I fill that empty space up here with a zero. Another way to think about it is taking that zero and just adding it onto the end of your number. So 240 plus 1 times 24, and I know that 1 times any number is, remains that number. So 24. Now I just have these two numbers to add. To make it easier, I can move that down here and line up my place values. So I have 0 plus 4, 4 plus 2, and 2 plus 0. So I know that 24 times 11 is 264. An optional step seven, or a more visual way to look at multiplication that we've been talking about is using the tape diagram. What you would do is kind of in between steps three and four, once you've decided what your easy to solve numbers are, you can create a tape diagram using your kind of easiest number to draw a tape diagram. So in this case, it would be 10. So I'd break my tape diagram into 10 parts. And I'm going to do some ellipses here just to show you that that continued and do my final one. And each of these are worth 24. So I'd fill in each of these to show that we're multiplying 24 10 times. And then to show on this tape diagram or to show visually this multiplication of 24 times 11, you have your easy to solve number of 24 10 times. And then you would take your second number and you would add, and you would say, how can I compare this 10 times 24 on a tape diagram? How can that help me solve 24 times 11? And it would be, oh, I just need to add one more box of 24. So it's a visual way for you to break down your numbers into easy to solve or easy to use um, diagrams. And your homework and your problem sets have you thinking about your problems visually using those tape diagrams. And this is what they mean.